Hello and welcome to Artist Express. Our guest today is George Yurkovich, a photographer who lives here in Salina. Welcome, George. Glad to have you. Well, thank you, and, and it's most kind of you to invite me to this. Oh, I appreciate well, it. Thank you very I, much. I think it's going to be fun to hear about your work. Well, uh, thank could you. you tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, how you got started? Well, uh, I'm uh, probably most noted. What I do is I photograph landscape. My favorite subject is local landscape. And uh, I got started in this um, oh, over 30 years ago. I, um, I'd always been inter interested in photography as a child. Um, I, I found out, I think it's somewhat genetic because I found out, uh, I, I never knew my grandfather, he, was, uh, he died in World War II, but my uncle and he both made, living, both made their living from uh, photography. Oh. And my uh, grandfather photographed at a time when people had to make their own emulsions, and, and uh, it was really a big deal then. Um, but, um, so I was always interested in it. Um, I think the, the big, um, oh, in uh, my job, I'm, I'm not, I don't make my living with phot photography. I'm a psychiatrist and I've been here in the community for over 30 years, well, actually 30 years. And uh, in medical school, we had to buy our own microscopes and oh. then we would sell them back to the first year students after we became <laughs> second year students. And I took my money and bought some camera lenses and uh, camera body. And I guess that's when I first uh, oh. kind of first got, you know, as I say, got started because right. I got the gear, the, some, uh, some camera equipment. Uh, but uh, I would say that um, when I, started thinking of it more as something I was going to do as an art form, as an artistic expression, was probably about 25 years ago. I see. Now, and when you started in college, uh, were you using a dark room still for No, your work? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm... Uh, You've been digital all I've the way. I've been happy to say that I've never done anything in the dark room. Uh, I uh, did a lot of lab, in, uh, chemistry lab in college, uh -huh. and I totally hated it. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, messy, smelly, uh, inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I've been uh, using digital. I've been using digital cameras and uh, uh, software, and I print all my own work. Right. Um, so I have a I have a printer, and I've been doing that uh, probably since 2000. I see. And I was. I, I, I thought when I transitioned to digital that I, that I'd always be doing some film because film was the thing. But uh, the technology advanced so quickly yes. that uh, I do totally, um, totally digital now. And it's, talk a little bit about the scale of your work, because that is something that uh, is very eye-catching for anyone who's not uh, seen your work before, that you have access to some pretty good-sized uh, formats. Well, I, I, have a, I have a printer with a 44-inch wide carriage, so I can print, um, I can print say, a 40 by 60 yes. uh, at home. Now, the problem, the problem with um, digital is you, you need to have enough information in your original file to be able to print a print that large with any degree of quality. I see. It's kind of like if you were making a pizza but you only had enough topping for an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> it might make a great hors d'oeuvre, but it's going to be a, lousy a pretty, pizza. <laughs> pretty, pretty lousy pizza. Um, so the image quality suffers if you try to go too big. I see. Uh, so um, I always strive to capture the highest quality image I can with the equipment that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't very often print that anything that large. Right. Um, I have an order that I need to print for, for a client. Uh, here shortly that's uh, that's the, our 240 by 50 inch prints but usually usually my pr my, my favorite size is a 16 by 20 or an 8 yeah, by 10 right great but but I can print big and and uh, in fact if you go into the museum the Smoky Hill Museum that background uh, that uh, covers the lobby is one of my prints yes. uh, you know that's an example of something that was used in a very large scale and I've seen that it's it's very striking yeah um, in terms of your subject matter, and, and you do like to shoot landscapes, are there any, uh, do you 
focus in on a particular landscape because it has some symbolic or metaphorical meaning for you, or are, are you judging strictly on a visual basis? Well, I, I, think, I, th I think my art on uh, many levels is really shallow. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> You know, and, and the reason the reason I do local landscape is because when I go and, and I like to travel, I go to workshops and I like to travel um, uh, and um, you know go to the national parks and do grand landscapes of the national parks. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, when I do that, I'm really consumed by the content material because you know, wow, this is say Zion or this is Death Valley or right. Capitol Reef or something like that. And, and um, uh, basically, you know, plus if you're from Kansas and you see mountains and big rocks, you kind of get excited because you don't <laughs> see that around here, with the exception of su some places. Yeah. Uh, and most notably, uh, if people, I haven't been, but uh, Little Jerusalem has opened up. It's a new uh, I park. actually have stood on those cliffs at yeah. a workshop many years ago, and it was when it was just called the Chalk Cliffs, I think. Right, right. But, Yes, uh, yeah. most interesting. But spot. but that's kind of a little aside. Uh, but uh, I like local landscape because um, when I show my work, and, and I have I have about a thirteen thousand follow about thirteen thousand that follow my page on Facebook, yes. and about the same amount on Twitter. Uh, and uh, it's mainly it's it's mainly local landscapes. I mean, I will post some stuff that I've taken on my trips, but. Most of it's local landscape, and the reason for that is I like to um, kind of elevate the common and the local uh, because these are places that people kind of drive by every day yes. and, and really don't look at or or appreciate or appreciate. Yeah. And the the other issue is I'm more interested about color and form than about necessarily the subject content. Right. That was and one so, of the questions I was going to yeah. ask you. So, and so it's, color it's, and form. So it's much easier to concentrate on that if I'm not awed by, right. the, by the subject material. Right, I understand. And so that's one reason that I concentrate on local landscape. Mm -hmm. And quite fittingly, uh, this dovetails right into the next, uh, the, what I want to say, I, I, I have currently a um, gallery uh, show at the uh, uh, Kansas Wesleyan Gallery. It's up through mid-December. Uh, the uh, opening is December the 5th, uh, 5 to 6.30, with comments at 5.30 by myself. Uh, it's up now, actually. It's, it's, uh, so we could you drop could go, by and see yes. it ahead of the, the talk. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's one reason by having the comments, la the opening later yes. in the show, is that people have a chance to see the show before, they, uh, before the actual uh, reception, right. op opening reception. Uh, but it's all, uh, it's called uh, Near Burma Road, and that's because all the prints are, with the exception of one, are just near Burma Road. Yes. And um, uh, Burma Road is one of my favorite uh, areas to photograph because it's very accessible, it's easy to get to out of town. It's, there are some big vistas and uninterrupted horizons. And, um, and so I kind of... Um, so that's where I've, I've tended to go, and, and, and since I've been doing this long enough, I've uh, amassed enough work that I could pick um, about 10 images that I printed, I processed and I printed. Um, I, um, uh, the uh, prints are 24 by 28, and then there's a, I believe, a 24 by uh, 45, and maybe a 24 by 60. I see. But, so uh, that gallery will be pretty full then. Yeah, they, yeah, it it, uh, it, it uh, fills the fills walls it without being without looking overcrowded. Right, you know, one uh, show that you had that I really enjoyed was a collaboration with another artist, Debbie Wagner. Could you tell a little bit about that because it uh, it offers some uh, it offered some really nice contrast while still. Uh, speaking about the same subject so well we had decided uh, Debbie and I decided to do a collaboration for about it, it spanned about a month where we were going to do sunrises because she has a uh, has the discipline of getting yes. up every morning and do and uh, uh, pa painting rendering the uh, uh, sunrise and pastels right. um, I told her I, I was not going to be getting up <laughs> that early and so uh, I could in the winter. This was during the winter months. It was in January, and so we could um, 
I could just grab my uh, camera and go to a, a sunset right after work. Uh, initially, we were going to do it side by side, but that proved to be impractical. Right. So we said, well, we're not going to be separated by more than about 20 miles, which is <laughs> how far Bennington is right. from Salina. Uh, the first one we actually did side by side, and, and we were kind of interested, at least I was interested in the whole issue of process. Um, what, how, um, how is uh, uh, my process compared to hers? And one mm -hmm. of the things that surprised me is... Um, you know, the sunset starts happening, Debbie has her materials, she's, uh, uh, she's uh, painting, and the sun sets and it's done. Or the sun, you know, the sunrise, yes. the sunset is done and, and she's and done. And she's done too. She's done. <laughs> and uh, I you know, run around and take pictures and I go to the computer and I do the processing and then I make the print. I actually spend more time uh, make, producing the final image uh, than she did producing her uh, producing Original. her image. Uh -huh. uh, the other uh, the, the other interesting thing about it is that my images are you know frac uh, captured in a fraction of a second, whereas she's doing something that's evolving yes. and rendering an image from that evolving process, and so that's a very different way of looking. And at it. And there's some interpretation there because she's trying to put what has been together with what will be in a another minute or whatever. Right. Right. So. Uh, right. And now, talk about how you feel your personal interpretation comes through. Does that come through in the processing afterwards, or when you're setting up the shot? Well, it starts with it starts with the camera. It starts with okay. setting up the shot. Um, you know, one of the things one of the things that happens is when you t you know we we live in a you know, as far as we know, a three-dimensional world. Maybe yeah. there's more dimensions. Up Who knows? to now, at least. At least what we know. So, <laughs> but uh, clearly three dimensions. And uh, photography is obviously two-dimensional. And so when you take a, uh, when you put something in a camera, you point a camera at something, what you do is, first of all, you put a border around a, uh, an area and you create relationships between space and negative space and, um, uh, those um, kind of graphic compositional issues that don't exist in nature. Right. I mean, they're not there it, it's inherently. It's not that way, yeah. And so you, by uh, putting the border around it, uh, uh, which is the picture, the, you know, the picture frame, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, sensor mm -hmm. size, uh, when you put that border around it, you, you create these relationships. And then as a photographer, you're responsible for everything that's in there. Yeah and uh, dealing with everything that's in there. And um, uh, so I don't know, what was your... Uh, well, kind of just request? I was just curious mm -hmm. about the role of okay, interpretation yes, yes. in photography. So it starts with that. It, it starts with composing it, and then uh, a lot happens uh, post-processing. Right. There's, less, there's far less interpretation in the actual printing. Right. Okay. Well, and uh, it's... You know, there was a time when photography was not really accepted as an art form, mm -hmm. and that has just changed dramatically in the last 40 years. And so it's, it's wonderful to have access mm -hmm. to the vision that you capture. Mm -hmm. And George, we're out of time. Well, my goodness. It went fast, it didn't it? It certainly did. Yes. It, thank you again for being with us. Remember, on December 5th at Kansas Wesleyan, you can see George's work firsthand, and we'll see you next time at yes, Artist and Express. Yes, they're, they're all for sale. Oh, there you go. <laughs>